outnumbered over time. OT, baby. Oh. Uh, great to see you, man, with your beautiful pink socks and your pink tie. Hi. Those look red to me. No pink. Can I get no, a they're, they're quite pink. They are pink, yeah. I want to be in the color we matched. of my socks. You know what? We you are the third dude in the last week who wants to be part of the color wheel i kind of I, what is going on i don't know i got accidentally included on it this week i saw oh, oh yeah oh. you i looped you in accidentally were you were you given a, i was ready a color for the wheel wait, wait so you then you spoke? decided to match julie of all the colors of course, that were on you know the wheel. why it's a bipartisan Prince, should we read into baby? that <laughs> <laughs> i love the way you say the wheel the wheel the wheel <laughs> Do you know that there are people who now tweet predictions on who's going to be wearing what on yeah. Harris's color wheel? Okay. Uh, and today, yeah, fact like one is person. Going back. One, oh, person. Yeah. one person. Yeah. One. Oh, no. So uh, as many of you know, because you're watching us now from our page, or you might be on Facebook Live, too, so welcome. But on our uh, foxnews.com slash out number, click on the overtime page, you'll see that there's something called outdressed, and you can dress us like paper dolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, Just boy. No way, yeah. really? Oh, I would never fib boy. about a color wheel thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's that I know. Popular. It's that popular. Uh, you know what? We we had some deep discussions on this couch today. I hope they're having these kinds of discussions in Washington D.C. and not just hiding behind their political boxers and briefs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1992, wow. tap the Soren. <laughs> Okay, wow, there's a the name chat. I haven't thought about in a long time. I don't know that they are. How about the Soren? Nice. You don't have that faith that they are? Something that could get passed in the Senate is never going to get out of the House. Anything that gets out of both houses is never going to get signed by the President. So uh, anything of real substance other than sort of continuing what's going on. He's not going to be President for much longer, though. And this is, this is what I hope and pray. I feel like uh, the other night when we were covering the final Super Tuesday on Fox Business, um, Mark Sherman, who is a representative from California, he's a Democrat, and all he did the entire time was rail against President George W. Bush. And it's like, dude, it's eight years later. Are you? Is that still how you're campaigning? And I just hope that the next president doesn't continue to blame this president. We really have to move on. We got to move forward. Yes. Well, the next president's going to be somebody who's part of this president's administration, I think. So I don't know. Do you have a crystal ball? Um, I'm sorry. You have a crystal ball? <laughs> I do. Sanders. I do. It's called knowing how to read a poll. Um, but I will say, look, uh, Julie. Uh, what, wow. if you know Whoa. what if it's just Drop a drop the mic? Drop out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, uh, I don't, uh, uh, you know what the problem with Washington is, having having worked down there? There's only one problem. problem. No, no. Bars is, don't stay open late enough. They don't. That's true. But they do get their drinking in. So that's not true. I have shut down every bar in Capitol Hill personally. Oh, so gosh. I, I don't you know if I'd brag about drinking that. Offline. Um, but Speakeasy. It's true. Like it's it. true. But um, the problem with D.C. is I don't care who you are or what party you belong to. Once you get down there, it's like... You get sucked into It's vortex. like playing... Yeah. It's like playing like, an, an, like sports. Like you get bought into your team. Yep. And you start... It's crazy. Like but nobody, I think yeah, that's insane. why, okay, I think this is what happened. I think you're absolutely right. Um, as a UCLA fan, I despise USC. Whenever I see someone who's got like a UCLA or USC backpack in an airport, I go up and I haze them and I make oh, fun of them for not getting into so UCLA. Sad. Is it? I think oh, it's so fun. I like that pride. But however, I don't want to see that in my politics. And I think that's why <laughs> you've seen the rise of Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. Not only are they a reaction to a horrible presidency, they're also a reaction to a two party system, which doesn't work for most people because they frustrated voters elected a new wave of, you know, philosophical, whether it's Tea Partiers or progressives or whatever they do nothing they have incredibly low ratings and people are sick of it and that's why they want to break that cycle but they keep but they keep winning that's the problem the problem is that yeah no if Hillary what, Clinton wins you're absolutely right the establishment wins again and, and that is an abomination uh, all right so we have in the live chat a follow-up to a moment that Kennedy and I had in the TV version of us about Iran and President Jimmy Carter and uh, GM Palco says inform Kennedy that the Iranians admitted in the 1970s were already westernized this is why they were so easily assimilated those coming from Syria or not. I, I would add to that. I mean, that's that person's I mean, they opinion, had money. They I, had a lot of money during the displacement. There's a big difference. So should we only let in rich people? But no, wait, but wait, wait. But the reason I brought it up with you is because Donald Trump and his comments recently, and, and Pete, you mentioned this too, um, that were so off-putting for many in his own political party, doubling down, tripling, quadrupling down on no Muslims until we solve this. Um, could have taken a page out of President Jimmy Carter's book. Now, the situations were very different, but when we had hostages in Iran, what Carter said was, you can't come in this country unless you absolutely deny any sort of allegiance to the revolution, I mean, just the, the, 
the mm-hmm. sheer craziness that was going so, but on. But do you really and think if someone wants to get into this country, people. if, if but, they're at the airport and, and yeah. someone from ICE says, okay, you must, disavow, be, you must disavow ISIS, and they'll be like, that yeah, time, totally. Can't but during that up. period of, of history, it happened before they got to that point. I mean, so I don't know how we would do it today because we have so many more people. But the idea of looking at people in a, almost like a quarantine fashion is not unprecedented in this country. Well, I don't think I don't think the federal government has been up front with us about what the vetting process is. We don't know. Yeah. So you raise a good point. How the heck do you go from 24 to 18 months down to just a few weeks if you're going to yeah. increase Syrian well, refugees oh, coming? Because, they've, they've, already know, because they've already vetted them. That's where, the they've, where been they sitting, they've been sitting in these refugee camps and no, Jordan talk to other me. Places. How does it work? Because I really so, don't so know. So there's two things here. One is they're not going to tell you what the metrics they so use. So you don't are. know either. But why would they tell me? So there's the ISIS people that can get around it. In San Bernardino. Listen, I have to say this, and I keep saying this. Nobody wished this country more destruction over the last 50 years than the Soviets. The biggest threat to this country. Nukes pointed at us. Nikita Khrushchev banging a, 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 his shoe on the podium at the U.N. saying we're going to bury you, consistently wishing us ill. If they had prevented refugees from the Soviet Union from coming here because the Soviets wished us ill, I would not be living here today. So I have, a very, personal, I have a very personal stake in this whole thing. Totally get that. But there's also a very hypervigilant sense of that we were fighting a war against communism. So, but see, that's the, that's the difference. World okay, war. so what is ISIS? I mean, and, and John Bolton, he, he laid it out the other day. It's not guys in gray suits in cubicles. It's not a nation state. They're not centrally located. It's a completely different enemy. Yet we're trying to, because it's comfortable for us, uh, conceive of it in the same terms as we did in East versus West during the Cold War. That was that was a, a, a tremendous war for us. I mean, not only because we were victorious, but also we knew who our enemy was. We knew where they were. We knew what their motivations were constantly. And this is such a postmodern, diffuse enemy. It's very hard to say how bombing people over there is going to make a difference with the weirdos here. Uh, it, well, it can be... But the, it's this far more, it's an even more dangerous and more coherent ideology because yeah. you have. Does that mean you have to billion, kill more people? Well, and if you have to no, kill you more have people to be, and they are diffused, don't you kill more civilians? Which is why you have to be all the more precise about how you, how you articulate it, which is why the president saying it doesn't matter what you call it yeah. truly is absurd because yeah. I'm not arguing for sure. fighting a billion Muslims. Yeah. But you also must be clear that there is a strand, whether you call it Islamism or jihadism or d- a desire for Sharia law, it is, yeah. an, it is an ideology, a fascist ideology, frankly. That seeks which is rooted in progressivism that 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 couples nicely with progressivism to make its inroads into into certain <laughs> countries. <laughs> okay, I mean now I want to go there, but look. Here's the thing about Muslims. You don't want to go there because it's really, really it, frustrating to think about because it's a really large no, dynamic here's, enemy here's, that's here's, difficult to define and defeat. No. So we put our heads it's not in a the matter of, No, listen. It's not a matter of progressivism. If you look at Muslims, yes, in, Amer- if you look at Muslims in America. It's all rooted back If you look at Muslims in America, Muslims in America compared to everybody else, are more highly educated, more affluent, right? They have probably integrated, if you're looking at college education, if you're looking at making money as the American dream, you're looking, looking at, at you're looking at immigrants versus refugees, which is different, by mm-hmm. the way. If you're seeking to come to the United States, a lot of these refugees aren't, don't even get a choice where they're going. Yeah. In fact, when you go what to the region and point. you ask them where they want to go, they say, I'd prefer to stay here. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so why don't they we create a mess- so, so and instead, we're, telling, no, we're going to send you Turkey, here. Turkey, Jordan. It's a very Mine. different yeah. calculation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I mean, why can't we create Oman? They have so much money. Saudi Arabia. Why can't we create, oh yeah, and try to get Saudi Arabia to pay for this. Why aren't they taking them? I agree with you. They're the worst. But forget about that. Yeah. They have a whole tent city for Hajj. They could house a million people no if they question. wanted to. They don't want to. Just write a check and no create question. a demilitarized zone. Get them to pay for it. No question. Listen, you this, could. I mean, seriously. No, but you're absolutely you right. I, I don't. Do. I don't have a problem with that at all. I really don't. I mean, I think that it would be nice if, as human beings, uh, we we talked a little bit about people being bombed out of their unholy hell holes. I mean, and, and these are places where their countries, their lives, their families, their communities, everything they know has been gutted. And not every person who comes from there is a terrorist. But they happen to be from a place where, for one reason or another, they've got no mobility. They've got no choices. And as Americans, you know, we should be the ones who are uh, more sensitive. To okay, Sandra. so let me just get this in here. We're going to say hi to our viewers because we're hitting record numbers here and everybody's very passionate about the discussion going on the couch right now. But I would ask our viewers to ask a question rather than make all these statements. <laughs> I'd love to ask them a question. Uh, so please write in your questions and thank you for all the fan notes as well. But 
continue. I don't want to get too much in the way here uh, of this discussion. Everybody is weighing and everybody sees both sides of the difficult this piece discussion. is you want to articulate it clearly and honestly without looking conspiratorial. No one's trying to find a, a, a Muslim terrorist around every bush. Mm. But you have to realize that the radicals use the masses from which to infiltrate and radicalize as well. So maybe Saudi Arabia doesn't want people in their country, A, because it's an Well, they've already had problems. Well, they've got with issues with terrorism but, but there, as well. But there's also a strand of Islamism that says the more more you can go forth in, into the rest of the Ummah, the rest of the world, and be and 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 establish mosques right. and communities there. The more effectual that is, we saw it in in, in Belgium, we see it in France. Th that's a, there's insular communities there that are effectively. No, we have no to wrap it up. They're wrapping us. Radicalized. We could go on forever. We, really we should could. do. And we Liam says, "Why is everybody picking on Julie? Can we disagree with a little more graciousness?" Thank I think, you, Liam. I think everybody was gracious. Thank you. Yeah. I love you Julie. All right. I, I love you too, Kennedy. Kennedy. More pink to match with Julie. I know. This is like bipartisan love. See, there you go. You are, you are so good at articulating your point, oh, and you are so you. unflappable. How's that thank for you. And I don't think people realize how, how and really Sandra, strong and gracious you are. And Sandra, <laughs> and Sandra you look really pretty. You. <laughs> You're gorgeous. Oh right. It's a slam. <laughs> See you.